I just wanted to give you all a moment to take in the rather surreal image of me wearing a hat and yet sitting in front of the bookshelf background. And now to increase the feeling of surrealism, I'm going to give you this intro. This is uh, uh, a favorite list is that one paper time time was two uh, uh, That's not uh, all. Uh, so you might be wondering what this video is all about. Is it a book review? Is it a movies review? Is it a books versus movies review? Is it just me talking? It's the last one. It's pretty much just me talking. But why am I wearing a hat and sitting in front of the bookshelf background? Well, because what I'm going to talk about pertains to both of my reviewing incarnations. That is, whether you're a fan of books or movies or television shows, you have probably come across the topic that I'm going to talk about. And that topic is... Spoilers. In the last couple of years that I have been reviewing things on YouTube, whether they be books or movies or television shows, I have gotten a few comments on some of my videos saying things along the lines of, You need to put a spoiler warning on the hey, front of these reviews. Hey, there were spoilers in this review. Where's the spoiler warning? Spoiler Come on, warning. there were spoilers. And like that. And my response to these comments is usually the same. I do put spoiler warnings at the front of my reviews if I think there are going to be spoilers in those reviews. However, all of this has gotten me thinking about what really constitutes a spoiler. And over the past couple of years, I have come to three conclusions. Conclusion number one. The definition of what constitutes a spoiler is completely arbitrary. In other words, each individual is going to define spoiler a little differently. I will put a spoiler warning at the front of my review if that review is going to talk about a major plot point, a major plot twist, or just the end of the story. If the review doesn't contain any of those things, I'm not going to put a spoiler warning at the front of it. And I think most people define a spoiler in that way, but I know that not everyone does. I mean, when you think about it, any element of any plot in any book, movie, or television show could conceivably be a spoiler. Because no matter how minor the detail might be, you are in fact spoiling that information. Let's take, for example, the back blurb of A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle which says that these three people will go on a most dangerous and extraordinary adventure, one that will threaten their lives and our universe. Well, that just ruined the whole book for me! If I were going to consider everyone's definition of spoiler, then I would have to put a spoiler warning on all of my reviews. And I'm not going to do that, because that's silly. Conclusion number two. What at one time might have been a spoiler may not be a spoiler any longer. And that line that decides what is a spoiler and what is no longer a spoiler is also arbitrary. For example, the most recent comment I got regarding spoilers was on my Crime and Punishment review. Really? That, that, that story's been around for over a hundred years. So where do you decide when something is no longer a spoiler? With Harry Potter fanfiction, it's usually decided that once a new book is published, then the previous book no longer has spoilers. Or something. In other words, once Deathly Hallows was published, then any information from Half-Blood Prince was no longer considered a spoiler. But let's look at an even older spoiler, what you might call a classic spoiler. Let's look at this spoiler. When this movie first came out, this was a major plot twist. No one saw it coming, and of course it was a major spoiler. At least I assume it was. I actually wasn't around when that movie was released. But now, everybody, regardless of whether or not they've seen a Star Wars movie, knows that Darth Vader is Luke's father. Because this particular bit of information has gone beyond spoiler and moved straight on to cliché. Everyone has either heard the line, Luke, I am your father, or seen the concept of the bad guy being some relation to the protagonist. But when did that happen? Where do you draw that line? I mean, when are the plot points for the end of the Harry Potter series no longer going to be considered spoilers? Nobody knows, because there's always some weirdo out there who hasn't read the books yet. <clears throat> Paul. And finally, conclusion number three. The name spoiler is a misnomer. The name spoiler implies that by having this particular bit of information, it's going to completely ruin the reading slash viewing experience for you. This is bullcrap. Let's take a look at that Star Wars spoiler again. Like I said, everyone knows without having to see a single Star Wars movie that Darth Vader is Luke's father. I mean, they made a trilogy of prequels about that whole concept. I knew when I first saw The Empire Strikes Back that Darth Vader is Luke's father, and I knew that it was going to be revealed at the end of that particular video. And yet, having that knowledge did not ruin the viewing experience for me. I still enjoyed watching The Empire Strikes Back. And I even enjoyed watching that particular scene. The Star Wars movies are still every bit as popular today as they were 30 years ago, even though we know exactly what's gonna happen. But let's look at a more modern day spoiler, a spoiler from another famous series of stories, the Harry Potter series. Spoiler warning. If anything can be considered a modern day Luke I Am Your Father, it's... Snape kills Dumbledore. 
This was the major plot twist of the Harry Potter series. It took everybody completely by surprise, and it was a major spoiler. And yet now, pretty much everybody knows that Snape kills Dumbledore. And when our children and our grandchildren read the Harry Potter series, they're all gonna know before they even pick up a book that Snape kills Dumbledore. And yet, I would wager that they are still going to enjoy those books every bit as much as we did. I mean, Songs from Paul just finished reading Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I would bet that he knew going into it that Snape was going to kill Dumbledore at the end of it, and yet I'm sure that having that information did not ruin the reading experience for him one bit, did it, Paul? Wait, he does what? Moving on. Now, I will admit that there is a certain element of surprise that you only get when you read something that you know absolutely nothing about. And of course, this is an element that you can never get back once you lose it. But that is not and should not be what reading or watching television or watching a movie is all about. It is one aspect, and having the information does not spoil the entire experience for you. I'm going to make a radical proposition here, which is that spoilers are not as big a deal as we are making them out to be. But if spoilers are still a concern to you, then my advice to you would be this. If you come across something, whether it be a blog post or a review or a video, that directly pertains to the thing that you do not want to be spoiled for, then don't watch it. I mean, if you don't want the Harry Potter series spoiled for you, then you probably shouldn't watch my review of the Harry Potter series, regardless of whether or not I put a spoiler warning at the beginning of it. I know that spoilers are not always easy to avoid, but with my videos, at least, they usually are. And don't worry, I'll still put spoiler warnings at the front of my reviews that reveal something major about whatever it is I'm reviewing, but honestly, when in doubt, don't watch it. And if you insist on watching it, then don't make a big deal about it. Because if you do, you really have no one to blame but yourself. And that is all I have to say about the matter. And so I will leave you with these spoilers. See you next time!